What's the word, y'all? The first round of NBA All-Star voting came out yesterday, and I realized that I was part of the problem. So here they are. We got LeBron James and Kevin Durant leading their respective conferences in total votes, which is cool, because last time we got them as NBA captains of the All-Star game, we got some very, very good memes. And of course, it was in the midst of the James Harden trade, so that kind of carried it. But still, both of those guys know how to play to a camera. Those are two really good captains. I remember once upon a time, LeBron James was known as like being undefeated in the All-Star game when he was the captain drafted. I don't know if that still reigns true today, but if it does, here's another opportunity, Bron. But there are some very noticeable things when I look at this, like um, Kevon Looney being top 10. Shout out to, shout out to Loon. Also, you got Paolo and Nicholas Claxton, Derrick Rose, Austin Reeves, and Jordan Poole. And the reason I'm pointing them out is because they have big fan bases um, and they really shouldn't have this many votes compared to some of the people that are snubbed so when i say i'm part of the problem i am part of the reason why dematis Sabonis is not even ranking top 10 amongst front court players because i personally have never put together a real life ballot this is the far as i've ever went um it tw tweeting nba all-star kenny beecham and 500 people retweeting it and 5,000 people liking it. Shout out to y'all. Y'all are crazy. But, like, this is the first I've ever been when I was on Cloud9 as a Bulls fan, um, putting Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Fred Van Vliet, uh, Zach Levine again. Yeah, that was good times where everything was great and we were towards the top of the conference, man. What I would give to go back to those times. But this season, the NBA decided, forget the Twitter thing. We've seen enough. And, and part of it might be because of uh, Bam Bam's tweet last year. So last year, of course, Bam Bam tweeted this. And Bam Bam is one of the biggest K-pop stars in the world. I mean, we're talking 11 and a half million followers. This tweet goes out there. It gets almost 40,000 retweets, 70,000 likes, and then also get the army to go ahead and tweet Andrew Wiggins, NBA All-Star. And in the moment, I, I was like, man, Wiggins don't, don't deserve to be there. Uh, but when you look at the options outside of him, considering how many injuries there were and how good he was performing, he deserved to be there. Shout out to Wiggs. And he was the second best player on the NBA championship team. So shout out to Wiggs. But the NBA decided, I'm not saying specifically because of this, the NBA decided this season, no more tweeting. If you want to put together a ballot or you want to vote for anybody, you got to put out a full 10. You got to go to NBA.com or you got to use your app, which is just a, just a lot of work. <laughs> So I haven't put together the ballot, but today that changes. And it's understandable that DeMond Sabonis is not top 10, even though he's playing like it. He should undoubtedly be an all-star, but he's playing in a market like Sacramento that if you're not an NBA sicko or NBA super fan, you're probably overlooking exactly what the Kings are doing slash what DeMond Sabonis is doing. Especially if you go to the official app and you're just putting together your voting, you're not going to see DeMontis Sabonis for some time. You got to really go down. You see De'Aaron Fox, who also should be getting a lot of votes, but you got to go down for some time. Even if I go filter and say Western Conference front court, he's on the third row behind some people that you're used to voting for. Shout out to Lowry. Come on, man. I got a lot of love for you. To put up 49 last night, that's just like, put him in the game. But, like, you're undoubtedly going to – vote for these four people they're up top they're having good seasons and they're notable names and a guy like Demont Sabonis even when he was an all-star in Indiana was kind of like an afterthought he was like the last man in the game today voting counts times three so I'm putting together a ballot that will see some of my favorite lowly ranked slash snub players but then again we're only voting for starters and if we're thinking about the starters in the Western Conference. But then again, my little vote for Demont Sabonis is not about to get him into an all-star starter spot, which is what we're voting on at the end of the day. We're only voting for the top 10. The rest is voted by, by the coaches. And I think because of that, Sabonis gets in, but we're only voting for the starters. And then based on what I see right now, out West guarantees starter lock based on the fan voting, which is 50%, 25% is the players, and 25% is the media. LeBron has the fan voting, he's gonna have the player voting, and he's gonna have the media voting. LeBron James is an absolute lock to be a starter, obviously. Jokic also absolute lock to be a starter because he's got the fan voting here because he's going to have the media he might be number one on media and he'll also have the respect of his peers at least enough to be a starter lock Steph Curry Luka Doncic also locks on both fronts so we're looking for one one front court player out west to take that spot and right now it is Anthony Davis based on the fan voting but Anthony Davis has only played 25 games. And I wonder how the media looks at that. Again, we don't know when he's coming back. So before the All-Star break, he should be back, hopefully. But we don't know how the media is going to look at that. And we don't know how the players around him are going to look at that. Especially with Zion being right on his tail. Now, Zion is also out with an injury, unfortunately. Uh, it's not, a, been a, not been a great year for injury luck in the NBA. 
but the, I, I could see a world where Z takes the last starting spot in the front court um, if Anthony Davis is not playing and he doesn't have the respect of the others. Out East, I'm seeing Kevin Durant and Giannis as absolute locks for the same reasons. And I honestly think an absolute lock for the backcourt is done too. I think Kyrie Irving has the fans. He's 1000% going to have his peers voting and the media might deduct him because of the stuff that happened earlier in the season but i think because of the fans 50 percent and the players other 25 percent, 75 percent of the vote is saying carrie irvin is number one and number two so he's gonna have a lock and donovan mitchell just had a 71 point game he's <laughs> he's absolutely a lock too so i think there is one spot open out east between jason tatum and joel and Embiid. as of right now joel and Embiid has the fan voting by about a hundred thousand a little bit less than that and if you look throughout the last previous seasons, Joel Embiid has handled Jason Tatum when it comes to the fan voting. Last year, um, Jared Allen had more votes than Jason Tatum, and Miles Bridges had more votes than Jason Tatum. But things are different this season for Tatum because he's playing at an MVP caliber level, and the Celtics are good. If you remember last year, the Celtics started off so bad, and he was playing good, but when you start off a slightly above 500, you're probably not going to get a lot of the votes, and now things are different. So I wonder what the media... And, and the players think of that last starting spot. So we're doing all of this voting and we're reacting to these things when in reality, like eight out of the 10 spots are locked and guaranteed. So we just voting on the other stuff. We just looking at the fact that the Knicks only have Derrick Rose and be like, what is New York doing? And honestly, the Derrick Rose uh, votes aren't just coming from Knicks fans. <laughs> I know plenty of Bulls fans is putting Derrick Rose in their ballot. I know Timberwolves fans that are putting Derrick Rose in their ballot, and then he's got the entire market overseas too. So that's why Derrick Rose is top 10. But like Jalen Brunson, he might not make the actual game, but he's been playing all-star caliber. And Julius Randle's relationship with Knicks fans is kind of crazy. A couple years ago, he was in All-NBA. And then a year after that, he's shushing the crowd and yada, yada, yada. And this year, he's playing at an all-star caliber level. But the fact that he has less votes than Nicholas Claxton, who's just over the bridge of him, is insane to me. Nicholas Claxton's fan base, whether it be the Brooklyn Nets or just his individual stands, should be outweighed by Julius Randle by a thousand, considering he's playing in the bigger on the bigger team in the bigger market, and he has been an All Star before. So it's insane to me that he hasn't even cracked top ten. No really matter because he's not gonna look be looked at as a starter anyway. So should it matter if he's top ten or not? It doesn't. It really doesn't. Shout out to the um, the Warriors fans. I mean, they they do not play. <laughs> them boys do not play they gonna vote they guys in i'm su i'm surprised we didn't see dante divincenzo in the top 10 i wouldn't be surprised if he's number 12 that i'll say that i wouldn't be surprised if divincenzo is number 12 because they vote and they vote daily what did p diddy say um vote or die uh that, that shout out to diddy if you want to see your guy be a starter you gotta vote or he not gonna get there um leave a like or subscribe you can do both you can do both